Today I'm going to answer questions about salinity, flow, some algae removal, cyanobacteria removal techniques, what water change does when it goes below coral level, pH question, and a cycling question. I guess we could consider this water change Wednesday on Sunday, guys. I was too busy, so we had to do it today. So let's get into it. TJ asked a question about, is flow from the return pump enough just from the return alone? He seems to think it is, everything looks really good. He wants to know if he can switch to a random nozzle that will create a flow back and forth. It may seem that he has enough flow with just the return pump, but over time, he's going to see dead zones, probably in the lower corners. My guess is it's probably a strong flow coming out, but that also could cause a lot of noise going over your overflow. So I recommend it to him to add another pump, maybe a mini wave maker down in the tank somewhere to create more random flow, and then he wouldn't have to be concerned about how much flow he has from the return. New viewers, Water Change Wednesday is a question and answer format. Ask me any question you want below the video in the comments section, and I'll answer it there, and then I answer it here, and I always answer out there. Right. Nolan has a question about salinity. All his corals are doing really well, but he notices his zoanthids and his duncan are struggling. He's noticed his salinity has dropped down to 1.023, and even a little bit lower, and he's asking me whether or not that could have an effect on his Duncans and on his Zoanthid. That's not an extreme drop over a period of time. If that were all at once, then maybe it's possible that the corals would be a little stressed, but because it happened with too much water makeup over a period of time, I don't think it is, Nolan. I've noticed that Zoanthids can be extremely I've noticed that zoanthids can be extremely picky sometimes. They won't grow for months at a time and then they'll all of a sudden start to grow. My Duncans change their look throughout the day. Sometimes they're closed up, sometimes they're open fully. After feeding, they're closed for a while, so I wouldn't be concerned at all about your salinity. What I would do is mix up enough salt water to raise that to 1.024, your first water change. And then the next water change, mix a little bit more salt to get it back to normal. I wanted to thank you guys who have joined the Tom Reefer Train membership. I hope you're enjoying the little extra behind the scenes. Anyway, thanks a lot, and let's keep going on the questions. Charles says he's using API Algae Fix Marine to keep his 32-gallon Coral Life BioCube algae free. He was having a lot of difficulty with diatoms on his glass and on his sand bed. I have to recant my situation on the reflux because I tried it in my 10 gallon and it was successful in removing it. It's growing back in the same spots that it was prior to the treatment. So I'm going back to my old method of taking your time. I've been going in there daily and picking it out with tweezers and removing it that way, and I can see it's making a lot of progress. So the chemical things that you use to get rid of algae, I believe they're temporary fixes. The bubble algae is looking like marbles in there. I don't know what to do about them. I'm not saying don't do it, and that it's not successful. It just wasn't successful for me. Jib47 says he's getting some cyano in his tank. And this is the only product or chemical I would recommend 
for cyano. I have used ChemiClean and it removes the cyano within 48 hours and it does not come back. Cyano can arise for many reasons. It can be flow, it can be your water parameters, it can be quite a few things. Once you remove it with the ChemiClean, if you get your parameters where they should be and your flow where it should be, I've noticed that it will not come back unless things change. Alexandros asks about a cycling question. He asks if his ammonia is gone in his cycle period, but his nitrite is rising, should he add more ammonia? When your ammonia goes away, that means your cycling is working correctly. The nitrite will rise, and you just want to wait until your nitrate comes to zero. So when ammonia and nitrate are zero, your cycling is complete. You can test your biological cycle if you want to. You can add a small amount of ammonia back. I've never done it that way. I don't know the amount of ammonia you're putting in to create the cycle to begin with. But if you put a small amount in, you might want to see if it creates a spike in your nitrite. It won't create a spike in your ammonia most likely, but it might spike your nitrite a little because the beneficial bacteria that create nitrite might be consuming the ammonia. Once you've cycled, you have an established bacteria culture in there where you can start adding fish and coral. You just don't want to go too fast. H-U-G-G-Y-J-D. He wanted to know if you do a water change and it goes below coral level, Will that affect your coral? He probably saw in my 10 gallon that my fire digitata is quite high up in the tank, very close to the surface. And if I do a 50% water change, it's completely exposed. When the water level goes below corals and they're exposed, they form a slime coat around themselves and that protects them for a time. Now you wouldn't want to leave it for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so, but for the amount of time you need to get your water and pour it back into the tank, it's absolutely no problem whatsoever. Within an hour, they're opened again. All right guys, that's it for this one. New viewers, subscribe up. We have fun here and a lot of content. Take care now.